Hey, good morning, Discovery. Welcome to Church at Home. If I have not yet had the privilege to meet you, my name is John. I get this amazing opportunity uh, to really lead this community that we call Discovery. And like I mentioned, I'm glad you're hanging out with us this morning. I actually can't wait to jump into the message today as I really believe it's, it's very applicable to the season that we find ourselves in currently. Now, let me ask you this question right here. How many of you guys consider yourselves to be safe and good drivers? Now, to be honest, I, I really feel like I am a safe driver. I feel like uh, when, when the road conditions are perfect, when the, when the sun is out and the streets are dry, like I am a safe driver. I, I don't drive fast normally. Um, I just, I feel like I, I've never been the driver who, who drives like this. Now, if you do, I love you. God bless you. Uh, welcome to Discovery, right? Uh, but I've never been that person. I've been like the person like just leaning back. Like, that, that's just how I drive, and, and, and so I, I've, I've never been, a, I'm pretty chill when I drive. Um, there's, there's just, I feel like I'm just a good driver. Now, with that said, there have been moments where, uh, where, where my chill, good driving kind of goes out the window, right? For instance, there was this one time that my family and I, we went to Tahoe, and I've never driven in the snow before. And so we were, if you know, if you've ever been to Tahoe, you know, like it, you, it starts off sunny, then all of a sudden it gets cold. And as it gets cold, you start seeing a little bit of uh, whiteness on the ground. And as you keep driving, all of a sudden blankets of white snow everywhere. And so here I am, I'm, I'm driving, it's good. And then all of a sudden I notice it gets a little bit colder. And then I see snow on the ground. And then all of a sudden, like snow's coming down and I go from, Yo, to like, ah, like driving, like when, when these conditions became so uncertain and, and I, and I wasn't used to the environment, man, like all of a sudden my driving sense just went out the window. Like all of a sudden I, I just, I'm like driving slow so, and, and I'm driving like white knuckle in my, 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 my steering wheel because I'm scared of what's going to happen. Like if you've ever driven the snow, you know your tail, uh, your tail uh, starts, to, starts, starts to drift and, and like I'm like, ah! And so my kids are arguing in the back. I'm like, shut up, shut up! Right, like I'm just kidding, I don't say shut up. Like we don't, Sonoma County, right? Like we don't say shut up to our kids. And, but 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 like I, I I remember that in this moment my patience drifted like I had no patience. All of a sudden, uh, just little little things started to get me angry. Things that never in in regular moments would ever bother me. But but what, once I found myself in in these unsure uh, this unsure moments of driving like I just everything that that typically never bothers all of a sudden begin to bother me and I found myself in moments of uncertainty of, of, of uncertain uh, environments of driving in the snow how all of a sudden how I would act normally saw a different side of me now, here, here's why I'm telling you this, not for you to judge me and, and not, for, <laughs> not for you to, to, to look at me and be like, oh, you're a horrible driver. No, that's, that, that, that's not why I'm telling you. I'm telling you this because I see a parallel between my reaction and driving in uncertain conditions to how we are living in uncertain times. All of a sudden, we find ourselves living in a world that has been bombarded with this little virus called COVID-19. All of a sudden, we're, we're living in these unprecedented, uncertain moments of time. 
all of a sudden our nation is being ripped apart by, by hatred and bigotry and injustice. All of a sudden in 2020, we find ourselves in unprecedented, uncertain moments. What I'm seeing in these moments of uncertainty, these moments of, of just of, of unprecedented uh, actions and time, that we're beginning to see people respond and act differently in these moments than when things were normal. Have you noticed that? Have, have you noticed how friends or family, because of everything that's going around, like all of a sudden, like there's just, there's just tension and all of a sudden you see relationships, friendships, family relationships being broken up because of, of, of like this virus and, and all of a sudden you see friends and roommates uh, just, just hating each other because of their stance in regards to the rioting and the protesting and, and the injustice and all of a sudden ways and people that we, that we got accustomed to and normal, all of a sudden this uncertainty in these moments that have brought stress all of a sudden are bringing to light attitudes and, and mindsets that, that we just would have never ever seen prior to these uncertain moments. And so here, here's my question this morning. Here's, here's what I'm really trying to get at is how do we posture ourselves? Like, how are we supposed to posture ourselves in moments of uncertainty? Like, as a believer, if you're watching this, and, and as a believer, if you would identify yourself with it as a Jesus follower, and if you would identify yourself as a Christian, someone who said, Lord Jesus, be the Lord or the boss of my life, how are we supposed to posture ourselves in these uncertain moments of time. Now, in order for us to answer this question, we're actually going to dive into a letter that has that was written by a man named Peter. Like I love Peter because if if Jesus loved a guy like Peter, I'm so grateful because then I'm like, okay, Jesus can love a guy like me. Like Peter, he was rough around the edges. He never seemed to say the right things at the right times. Uh, Peter, he he just he always said what he thought. And, and, and so Peter, in, in this letter that he pens in 1 Peter chapter 4, he addresses the posture that believers should have in moments of uncertainty. Now I know what you're thinking because right off the bat, Peter initially would not have been the best representative to, to, to tell us how we should respond in uncertain times, right? Because when we think of Peter, at least when I, when I initially think of Peter, I think about the moment right before Jesus is being crucified. As Jesus is being tried uh, and, and as he's being placed in front of a panel of people that would, that would, uh, that would, uh, justify and, 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 and condemn Jesus to death. Here is Peter. He's hanging out in the courtyard. Like he's living in an uncertain time. All of a sudden, Jesus, the leader of the movement that Peter gave up everything to join, all of a sudden, Peter uh, he finds himself in an uncertain time because his leader, Jesus, is being tried. And Peter's hanging out in the courtyard, right? And all of a sudden, we read in Scripture, in the Gospels, that Peter hanging out in the courtyards, and someone's like, hey, aren't you that guy that was hanging out with Jesus? And Peter's like, no, that's not me. I don't know what you're talking about. In fact, this happens a total of three times where people are like, hey, you're, you're that guy. Uh, the text is that all of a sudden, he, Peter started cursing like, beep, I'm not beep. <laughs> I'm not censored, right? Like, I, I, like, like Peter in uncertain moments and like how he typically is that the bold Peter all of a sudden in moments of 
uncertainty. We find Peter denying the very leader, the very person that he gave up everything to follow. And so when I think of this, and I think about this is the same Peter that is going to write this in 1 Peter chapter 4. I'm like, Peter, like you have no, like you have no street cred, if you will, to tell me how to respond in uncertain moments because you failed in that moment by denying Jesus. But here's what's so interesting to me is that Peter, when he encountered and when he experienced the death and resurrection of Jesus, something changed inside of him. When Peter experienced the death and resurrection of Jesus, Something shifted inside of him. Friends, can I say this morning that when we encounter the death and resurrection of Jesus that we call salvation, when we encounter that moment, that there should be something that changes inside of us. That when we experience and encounter the resurrection the death and resurrection of Jesus, that there's something inside of us that should change, that shifts. And then all of a sudden, because Peter experienced the death and resurrection of Jesus, we see in the book of Acts when Jesus already ascended into heaven, we see a different Peter. We see a different Peter respond in moments of uncertainty that rather than, than walking around in, in, in fear, rather than walking around just like, I don't know what to do, all of a sudden we see a brand new Peter in Acts. We see a Peter who would stand in front of the multitudes giving an account of the goodness and faithfulness of Jesus while in moments of uncertainty. And so it's, I believe, this Peter, this new renewed Peter that writes this letter that we're going to read in 1 Peter chapter 4. And it's really going to set the precedence of how we as believers should posture ourselves in moments and times of uncertainty. But before we jump into that, uh, Peter, he, he starts off chapter 4 uh, with, with this idea, the, the, the main idea that sets the precedence of how we, we view everything else. He says that, that in verse 1, that we need to set our minds on the way that Jesus would think. That we, would set, that we should set our actions through the thought process of Jesus. And then for the next five verses, Peter gives this, this eloquent explanation of, of what it looks like to, to be different to think different than, than our old self and our new self. And then he gets to verse 7. And, and he begins to, to unravel the posture of believers. So what I want us to do in our next moments together, I want to give you Peter's prescription to how we should posture ourselves in uncertain times. So we're going to start in 1 Peter 4, verse 7. Check this out. He says this. Everything in this world is about to be wrapped up. Okay, so Peter starts off verse 7. And he says, hey, surprise. After he's like, after he lets us know, hey, we got, we got to process things through the mind of Christ. Verse 7, he's like, hey, the world that you know, it's about to be wrapped up. Oh my gosh, like Peter, hello, wow, that's so positive. My gosh. 
Like Peter, he, he, he lets his audience in on this idea that the world as they know it is about to look different. That they're stepping into an uncertain, unprecedented moment in time. And as we keep reading, what we'll notice is Peter's like, hey, the world that you know, it's about to be wrapped up. So run for your lives. Ah! <laughs> no, not at all. That's, in fact, that has, that's not even close to Peter's prescription of how we posture ourselves. So let's look at the first thing that Peter says, the first prescription that Peter prescribes us when it comes to posture ourselves in unprecedented, uncertain times. He says this. First thing, he says, take nothing for granted. Take nothing for granted. Like the first prescription that's prescribed to us in uncertain times is like, hey, don't take things for granted. Like be grateful for what you have. See, I think it's very easy in moments of uncertainty and, and moments of the virus and, and moments of, of uh, the riots and in moments of natural disasters, it's very easy to look at things that we don't have. It's very easy to glance at what we don't have and be like, I, I, I don't have this. I need. But, but Peter is saying, hey, no, that's not what we do. In moments of uncertainty, we got to become grateful for the things that we have. And so Peter, the first prescription, he says, be grateful. Take nothing for granted. He goes on to say, stay wide awake in prayer. So, so right after he says, take nothing for granted, he says, stay wide awake in prayer. This idea that he's like, pray. <laughs> Like there's something about prayer. Prayer does something. Prayer strips away something in our heads and in our hearts. That if we can get to the posture of prayer, it does something. And here's what I think prayer does to us. Is that when, when I can begin to pray, what it does, prayer elevates my perspective. Prayer elevates my perspective. And so, though my problems may be right here, if I can just muster up the strength to begin to pray, all of a sudden my prayers elevates me from right here to who I'm praying to. And so Peter is like, hey, stay awake in prayer. In uncertain, unprecedented moments in time, learn to pray, learn to elevate your perspective by looking at the pro by going from looking at the problem to looking at who God is. Pray. He says, "We got to be grateful. We got to pray." Let's see what else he says. He goes on to say, "Most of all, love each other as if your life." depends on it. Our posture in uncertain times shouldn't be to pull away our love, but our love should shine the brightest in uncertain times. In these moments of this virus, in the moments of natural disasters, and in the moments of rioting and looting and, and, and the, the hatred and, and everything that comes with, like it's our, like, we love, we shouldn't pull our love away, but it's in these moments where my love for you should be seen even more. It's in moments like these where your love for me and for your neighbor should be seen even more. See, unfortunately, what I've noticed is that for a lot of us, like we've pulled back our ability to love because we're so gripped with fear. But Peter's saying, listen, as a believer, as someone who has made Jesus the Lord or the boss of their life, it's in these moments 
that we should love each other as if our life depends on it. As if to say love is not an option in moments like this. As if to say love is vital in moments and in seasons. That's this. He says, be generous with the different things that God gave you. Passing them around so all get in on it. Did you catch that? In uncertain moments, in, when, when the world seems like it's, it's going to be, uh, it's like it's going to implode. Like our posture should be to be giving, to be generous. Like a public shout out to each and every one of you who have continued to sow financially into the mission of discovery during this unprecedented time. As I told you in that video that I sent you guys, like it would have been very easy to pull away and to say, hey, if church is not meeting, I'm going to stop giving. But you understand what Peter is saying in this moment. He's like, hey, when things look like the world is caving in, be generous with what God has given you. In fact, there's a small group uh, one of our one of our small groups, the uh, the outreach small group, the homeless small group, like they guys, like they are killing it. They're they're doing phenomenal. Like in this moment when everyone is locked away in their house and and they're like, hey, this is mine, and 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 and, and leave me alone. I'm, I'm I'm like I'm scared. The world's caving in. Like this small group is out on the streets, y'all, and they're finding homeless people and they're cooking meals for them. Like they understand this posture in which Peter is telling us. And here, here's why this is so important. Here's why it's so vital that you and I begin to live, begin in these unprecedented, uncertain moments in time, why it's so important that we're grateful that we pray, that we love hard, that we're generous. Peter identifies that in the next verse. Check this out. He says, we do this. That way God's bright presence will be evident in everything through Jesus. And he, Jesus, gets all the credit as the one mighty in everything on course to the end of time. Listen, how you live in uncertain moments, how I live in these uncertain moments is important because it sets a precedence of how people see Jesus. So this morning, I want to challenge you to begin to, to look deep within your heart and your soul and to see, man, am I modeling myself? Am I posturing myself? In, this, in these moments of uncertainty, in these crazy times, am I posturing myself in a way that brings glory to Jesus? Now this morning, if you're watching and you've never experienced, you've never encountered the death and resurrection of Jesus, we call salvation. If you've never said, Jesus, take over my life, become the Lord or the boss of my life, that's the first step. That's where it all starts. So this morning, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And you could just repeat after me. The Apostle Paul writes in Romans 10, 9, that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised Christ from the dead, death, encounter death, resurrection, that we will be saved. And so after I lead us into this prayer, if you could just, in the comments below, just say, I made a decision. Because we want to join you on the journey that you are about to embark upon. The best decision, the best journey that you could have ever make, will ever make. So just repeat 
Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, today I want to make you the boss of my life. I repent of my sin. Forgive me. Make me new. I believe you died and rose again so that I could spend eternity with you in heaven. I love you. In Jesus' name.